Hi, this is Don McAllister and welcome to another Tip of the Week video. Well, this week's tip was suggested by Mark Baldry, who finds AirDrop simple, undeniably useful, and tells me that recently he's become aware of just how many people never even realise that this feature is available. AirDrop is a feature built into OS X and iOS that allows you to easily transfer files, documents, images, web links, and many other things between devices. There's very little configuration required, and although it did have a shaky start, AirDrop seems to be getting more reliable. So let me show you how simple it is to transfer documents, images, and more between the iPhone, iPad, and Mac using AirDrop, providing, of course, that you have the devices that support it. Now, I have my usual setup here. I have an iPhone 6S Plus, uh, a late edition Mac, and also an iPad Air as well. There are some lists of devices on the Apple website that uh, tell you which devices support AirDrop, but uh, basically any modern Mac or iOS device will do these days. Now, AirDrop does rely on Bluetooth, and if you have a look at this particular iPhone, you'll notice that Bluetooth is actually switched off. You can get to Bluetooth from settings. Okay, but to get to AirDrop, if I swipe up, you'll see that over here, AirDrop, uh, it's currently switched off. Uh, you can give permissions to uh, other people to send you things as well as for you to send things to them. You can just communicate with people in your contacts only list or basically everybody. I'm going to go with everybody at the moment. So if I tap everybody, you'll see what will happen. Uh, above, you'll see that Bluetooth has actually switched on now. So we're now ready to communicate with anybody using AirDrop. Let me just swipe Control Center out of the way. And across on the Mac, if I just do Command N to bring up a Finder window, if I go to AirDrop, you should see here very shortly. There we go. There are two devices. I've got my iPhone and my iPad as well. Now, if I want to send something across from my iPhone to the Mac, all I need to do is uh, let's go into Photos. And let's just get one of these screenshots here. I'm going to send this across to my Mac. If I just hit this little Share button down at the bottom, You'll see the two AirDrop icons appear in the top panel. So let me go ahead and select uh, MacBook Pro. And you'll see across on the Mac. Well, that has actually downloaded automatically. I didn't get prompted because I'm actually using the same Apple ID on both the iPhone and also the Mac as well. So it's a really seamless way of transferring information between both devices. Let me sign out of this account on the Mac and sign in to another account and we'll see just what the differences are. So across on the same Mac, but I've logged in as a different user. So I'm using a slightly different Apple ID than I used before. Uh, if I go to AirDrop within the Finder, again, we should see the two devices. There we go, my iPhone and my iPad. If we go back across to the iPhone again now, if I go into Photos and let's pick uh, another image to transfer, let's say this image of the iPad. Again, hit the share button. And now within the AirDrop panel, I see two icons, SEO iPad, which is the iPad that's on my desk, but now Don, which is on the MacBook. So if I tap on Don, you'll see across on the MacBook, we have the option to open in photos, to decline or to accept. If I just say open in photos, that transfers it, opens photos and drops the image in. And there we go. So back to, if I just close this down, uh, back across to the phone. So if I come out of here, let's try something else. Let's try a web link. So if I go to here, uh, here is a website, it's Macworld. Again, if I tap on the share icon, again, I've got the Don icon, but I've also got the icon for the iPad. Let me tap the iPad. And across over on the iPad, you'll see straight away, uh, it's received the link because I'm logged in as the same user across on the iPad. It's actually logged me into the same website automatically. Okay, let's have a go at sending something to, uh, well, from the Mac to my iPhone. So let's uh, come back out to the home screen. So if I go to uh, here and let's open another Finder window. Let's say I want to transfer something across to the iPhone. Uh, all I need to do... Let's see what I can drag across. So this is quite a large file. I don't want to drag that across. Let's go to Documents. And under Videos. Let's say this uh, Sid and Lizzie video. 
It's only 54 megabytes. I can drag that across, drop it on the iPhone icon. And over here we can see the video and I can say either accept or decline. I will say accept. Again, these are different Apple IDs, so I have to accept it. And that's now transferring over across to my iPhone. Now, after doing a transfer, you might want to switch off AirDrop. Uh, it's very disconcerting receiving an unexpected request to accept an AirDrop transfer. You may also want to switch off Bluetooth, but to be honest, I tend to leave Bluetooth switched on pretty much all the time to enable handoff and also to pair my Bluetooth headphones. But anyway, that's it for this week, and thanks to Mark for the great suggestion, and I'll be sending him a Screencast Online baseball cap. Now, if you have any suggestions for a short tip to be covered on the Tip of the Week show, please send an email to don at screencastsonline.com. If you found this short tip useful, there are over 700 full video tutorials available to Screencast Online members and a new full Apple video tutorial published every week. You can get a 14-day free trial membership over at screencastsonline.com or check out some of the free content over on the Screencast Online Showcase app, that's SEO Showcase, on the iPad, iPhone and Apple TV.